Hey, what up, Slackers? Today I want to talk about the state of California. The great state of California. It's got so much romanticism behind this simple nine-letter word. Is it six or nine letters? Anyway, California. Um, yeah, we, we all have our own ideas of what the state of California stands for. And it's... Yeah, it's, uh, I, I have to say, um, it's one of my favorite places on this earth, um, because of its multiculturalism, its diversity in the people that is there, it's, um, the way that it tolerates, um, different ideas and views, it's progressivism, um, it's, uh, what do you call it, entrepreneurialism, and it's a wonderful place to realize and to achieve the American dream. And I, I don't actually think there is a better place than California. If you have a big idea, if you want to um, just exploit your own potentials and um, make the most of what you can do, with the talents that you have um, because everything is possible in California. But of course, in recent years, uh, we've also seen California getting its share of problems in the, yeah, the homelessness, um, the high cost of living there because of the, uh, the tech bubble. If it's even a bubble, it's not probably a bubble, but uh, how Silicon Valley drives up the uh, the housing costs in the entire Northern California Bay Area um, and Southern California kind of being overcrowded, the traffic, um, the pollution. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bunch of problems, but still, we are so, so fond of this awesome state. Um, and yeah, um, Today I want to just to discuss California and it's a little bit of its brief history. Whatever Wikipedia uh, is going to say about California, I'm going to read it to you. And uh, before we begin, today's idioms are as follows. The first one is a word and it's called relish. This is not something that you put like the, the ground... Uh, cucumbers that you put on your hot dog, although it's also called relish. But here, relish means that you treasure something, that you value something, and it's used as a verb, relish. The second word is stymie. Stymie just means to suffocate, suffocate and to prevent something from ha from happening. Um, yeah, you can you can think of it. Um, and the imagery that I have is like basically, um, yeah, just choking someone on, uh, just yeah, choking someone on the neck, and to to kill that person. But that's an imagery. It's really to kill an idea, uh, the way that it's mostly used. And the third one is beacon in the night. For that, I can just use one word to describe what it is: America. Um, because America is exactly what a beacon in the night embodies. Beacon, of course, is, I think beacon is kind of like a, a lighthouse. I need to look it up later, but don't quote me on this. But it's kind of like a spot where you see light in the middle of a dark night. And um, America has, has always been that place. Um, Dang, I don't know how I'm going to fit that into the context of reading about California, but um, let, me, let me give that a try. It just means a bright spot in the midst of darkness or bad times. And the last idiom is, it's almost true to the extent. Um, so I guess it's, uh, it's basically agreeing with someone's idea but putting a limitation on it. It's almost true to the extent, except, you know, blah, blah, blah. So let's see how, uh, 
how I can apply these idioms into the uh, context of the of the uh, the paragraph that I'm reading to you. Okay, let's go back to the great state of California. California, officially the state of California, is a state in the Pacific region of the United States of America with over 39.5 million residents across a total area of about 163,696 square miles. California is the most populous U.S. state and the third largest by area, and it's also the world's 34th most populous sub-national entity. Hmm, I wonder, well, first of all, the 39.5 million uh, inhabitants in California, that's kind of a, yeah, I, I'm surprised, that, that's kind of uh, low, um, to, to my knowledge, because the United States has, what, like, a, a bit over 300 million people, and only a little over one-tenth of these people live in California, that's kind of a surprise, I would think a lot more people live in California than 39 million. But I don't know when the census was last taken there. Um, so that, that sounds a little off. Um, the most interesting part of this sentence is that um, California is the world's 34th most populous subnational entity. So what do you consider a subnational entity? How do they rank them? So is Antarctica a subnational en entity because many countries have a claim over a territory there, um, is, I don't know, my house a subnational entity because it's got, uh, yeah, it's, it's a region, it's a, it's a part of America, and, uh, it's got multiple people living in it, you know, that's how, how, how do you define subnational entity and how you come up with the, with the 34th ranking for California? Okay, California is also the most populated subnational entity in North America. Okay, so my house can definitely not be a subnational entity because California is. Wait, yeah, uh, I take that back. It can still be a subnational entity, but it's not going to be the largest because California is the most populated subnational entity in North America. Hmm, and has its state capital in Sacramento. Yeah, that's a pretty typical uh, place to put a state capital away from where you have your uh, money, aka Silicon Valley, and your, uh, I guess, people, people meaning the stars and the attractions in Hollywood that's in Southern California. So, Put it somewhere in the middle of nowhere in Sacramento and uh, to, to make sure that we have some people working for the state government. That's awesome. Well, Arnold was there, so it must not have been so bad. Um, the greater Los Angeles area and the San Francisco Bay Area are the nation's second and fifth most populous urban regions. I know that New York City is number one. But I guess LA is number two. Okay. With 18.7 million and 9.7 million residents, respectively. Okay. The 9.7 million for Bay Area is most likely outdated. Just by the way that Silicon Valley has been expanding for the last 10 years, I think there's got to be more than 9.7 million people living um, in Northern California or in that Bay Area. Um, yeah, gotta be more than that. Los Angeles is California's most populous city and the country's second most populous after New York City. <clears throat> California also has the nation's most populous county, Los Angeles County. Yep, what a surprise. And its largest county by area, San Bernardino County. The city and the county of San Francisco is both the country's second most densely populated major city after New York City and the fifth most densely populated county 
behind only four of the five New York City boroughs. Okay, so I got the idea. LA has more people, but San Francisco has more people packed in a smaller place. That's why it's more densely populated. Well, all that makes sense. That kind of also drives up the housing costs in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, even without the help of the Silicon Valley boom. Um, California's economy, with a gross state product of $3.0 trillion. Somebody please help me put that into context. I don't know what a trillion dollar means. I don't even know what a billion dollar means. I just know Mark Zuckerberg and uh, Jeff Bezos and, and guys like that have a lot of them. Uh, have a lot of them billions, but to me it doesn't really mean... It, it doesn't really mean anything, because I don't know what, what is a trillion. And, um... Uh, California is the largest subnational economy in the world. Okay, so again, the idea of subnational economy. How do you look at the subnational economy? Can you say, um, like New York, New Jersey, and uh, uh, what do you call it, Connecticut and Massachusetts is a subnational economy of the Northeast? Because here we're excluding New Hampshire, Vermont, and also Maine. So does that, yeah, I don't know. Does that even make sense? How do you, how can you say a group of states can represent a subnational economy? So in China, I guess, subnational economy would be like Beijing plus Shanghai. Um, and in Korea, a subnational economy would be like the greater Seoul area. Uh, that's, uh, that's hard to comprehend how they, how they calculated that. But I guess in the United States, the subnational economy is uh, compared on the basis of the state, in the unit of each state. So California, uh, gets the number one, number one spot over there. Um, if it were a count, if it were a country, <clears throat> California would be the fifth largest economy in the world. Wow, that's pretty impressive. And where would America be? Like the 10th? Um, and the 37th most populous as of 2020. The greater Los Angeles area and the San Francisco Bay Area are the nation's second and third largest urban economies. 1.3 trillion and 1.0 trillion respect respectively as of 2020. After New York metropolitan area um, 2.0 trillion. Okay, so I guess California, so LA and SF combined together beats New York in its, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, GDP, econ the size of the economy. That kind of makes sense. So, yeah, if you're talking about New York to LA, there's a reason. You're going from number one spot in the country to number two spot. And, uh, yeah, San Francisco's not that far off behind, or not that far behind. Um, yeah, the San Francisco Bay Area combined statistical area, what does that mean? Had the nation's highest gross domestic product per capita in 2018. And that is 106, uh, 106,000, 106,757 dollars per person among the large primary statistical areas and is home to four of the world's 10 largest companies by market capitalization and four of the world's 10 richest people. Yeah, that is not surprising at all and I'm actually surprised that it's not even more skewed toward uh, the San Francisco Bay Area in terms of the world's largest companies and the world's richest people because I'm, I don't know how like not all 10 out of the 10 companies and 10 out of the 10 rich guys richest guys in the world live in California Because only that would make sense Where can everybody else live? Maybe except for Bill Gates. He lives in Washington State. So at least 9 out of the 10 has got to live in in California. Oh, we're forgetting Warren Buffett there. He lives in uh, Nebraska. Okay, well, 
Um, California is considered a global trendsetter in popular culture that nobody can argue against. Communication, information, innovation, environmentalism, economics, politics, and entertainment. Uh, that politics part, I kind of disagree right now. Look at how uh, Newsom is doing over there among the uh, uh, among the the are are in the midst of um, the pandemic here in twenty twenty. Uh, not too good. I don't know how they are a leader in politics other than that Kamala Harris got elected as the vice president of the United States for the next uh, four years, which is cool. But um, you know. I can't see California being a global trendsetter in politics. As a result of the state's diversity and migration, California integrates foods, languages, and tradition from other areas across the country and around the globe. This is such a true statement. Um, echoing what I was saying before, California is the most tolerant place in North America. Probably in the entire North and South America, um, because of its blend of cultures and its multicultural background of the people that live there. Um, California, what's not on this Wikipedia page is I'm sure that California has the least percentage of white people in America. Um, that, I mean, you don't have to think about it to, 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 to know that it's true because. Well, there's so many immigrants that come to California, and California was originally like part of Mexico, so the natives there, or if you call them Mexicans, they're really the, the Californians there, they're already there, so um, that further dilutes the white people in the percentage of California residents. So yeah, the state of California has, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have less and less white people, but it's going to have more and more rich white people. So that's kind of an interesting, uh, interesting trend. So yeah, you can be in California, you can be white, or you can be both, but you've got to be rich too to be there because all the other white people are moving out of California. Only the rich ones get to stay. And of course, if you're rich, you absolutely are welcome to stay in California because most of those rich people in California aren't white. Um, I don't know if that statement is true. Um, so yeah, that, that is to be determined. Um, okay, going back to what I was saying, but before going back to that, um, I, I thought of a really good one. So if you relish um, an openness in culture, progressivism, uh, liberalism, and to challenge the status quo, as well as entrep entrepreneurialism, then California is a great place to be because so many people have achieved their American dreams in the state of California. Um, I think that makes sense, right? Um, yeah, so that's how I would use relish in that, um, in that context. And side me, while I'm at it, I'll just use, the, use another example here. So if you ever think of moving to California, uh, don't let that idea get stymied by the high cost of living um, as well as the, um, yeah, ridiculous housing prices in California. Um, or how should I say this? Yeah, don't let that idea get get stymied in its cradle because there's always a way for for you to move to California if you have the idea of what you want to do and a dream that you want to pursue. There's always a way for you to make a living, whether that is, um, you know, to be a waiter or a waitress in a restaurant if you're, you know, decent looking or you can go into the porn industry. If you're a guy, you don't have to be very good looking. You just have to um, have uh, a big endowment as well as to be able to, um, yeah, get hard at moment's notice by the director and the uh, filming crew. Um, and if you're a 
a girl, of course, you have to be hot uh, to be in porn. But of course, with Pornhub, now um, porn is democratized. Uh, as of maybe like a week ago, that was still the case. But I think they just took down a lot of videos that aren't, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, verified that aren't from verified accounts so that path is kind of uh gone so uh so much so much for that idea but you know the idea is true if you want to move to california don't let any of those intimidations stymie your uh your passion and your your dreams okay so that's for stymie going back to california it is considered the origin of the hippie counterculture. Yeah, definitely. Uh, beach and car culture, the internet, and the personal computer, among others. Wow, that's quite a collection there, California. Hippies, beaches, beaches car, internet, and personal computer. Yeah, it runs the gamut. Oh, that's another good, um, what do you call it, idiom to, 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 uh, to use. It runs the gamut. It just means that it, it covers everything um, under the sun. So, yeah, um, it's, uh, it's, it's remarkable that California is a symbol for so many things. And that's why it's a dream, it's a dream designation for a lot of people either to live or to re retire at. Um, the San Francisco Bay Area and the greater Los Angeles area are widely seen as centers of the global technology and entertainment industries. Yeah, with San Francisco being technology and Los Angeles being entertainment, respectively. California's economy is very diverse. 58% of its of it is based on finance, government, real estate services, technology, and professional scientific and technological business services. Although it accounts for only 1.5% of the state's economy. What does that mean? California's agricultural agriculture industry has the highest output of any U.S. state. Yeah, if you ever take a drive uh, between, I think it's the, is it the 5 or the 10? Um, it's, it must be the 5. Uh, Interstate 5 between LA uh, to San Francisco, you will see like vast stretches of, wait, is that the 5 or is that the, I, I, I'm getting maybe a little confused here, but there's vast stretches of like, um, just, I, I wouldn't call them farms, there wouldn't, there wouldn't be farmlands by like Midwestern standards, but um, they're just like places where where people are, I guess, <laughs> where people uh, produce produce agricultural goods like um, uh, groves, orange groves, uh, groves. I guess the word groves just means a bunch of trees, a bunch of planted trees for a harvest, um, and um, cornfields. Am I am I getting a, a what do you call it a, a uh, a deja, not a deja vu. Am I, am I getting a hallucination here? Is that California? Cornfields, that's, that's gotta be the Midwest. Okay, so anyway, um, California is pretty heavy on agriculture, um, but 58% of its econ economy is based on all of those services that, uh, we have just mentioned above. So, and, and, and this sentence, Oh, okay. Now the sentence makes sense. Okay. So, agriculture only accounts for 1.5% of California's economy, but it's already a giant, um, it's already a giant piece in the global output by the U.S. agricultural export. Okay. I, I, I got it. Okay. That means Californians, uh, the Californian farmers are very productive compared to the rest of the country. Well, not to mention that California has the best weather. So, uh, yeah, I guess they should be exporting all that, um, all that good foods and, and other agricultural products. 
California shares a border with Oregon to the north, Nevada, and Arizona to the east, and the Mexican state of Baja California to the south. The state's diverse geography ranges from the Pacific coast in the west to the Sierra Nevada mountain range in the east, and from Redwood and Douglas fir forests in the northwest and to the Mojave Desert in the southeast. The Central Valley, a major agricultural area, dominates the state's center. I didn't know that the state had a center, and uh, yeah, Central Central Valley, yeah, is probably a forgotten area that is only worth mentioning here in a Wikipedia page. I, I literally know nothing that came out of Central Valley, uh, and if you came out of Central Valley, if you're a person, uh, no offense. It's just that, um, yeah, Central Valley, because California, isn't that all about the coastal spots and the coastal counties? Central Valley. Anyway, um, although California is well known for its warm Mediterranean climate and monsoon season weather, the large size of its of the state results in climates that vary from moist temperature rainforest in the north to arid desert in the interior as well as snowy alpine in the mountains yeah big bear um all these factors and also yosemite right yeah that's interesting um all these factors lead to an enormous demand for water. In total numbers, California is the largest consumer of water in North America. Over time, drought and wildfires have become more frequent, yeah, definitely in recent years, every single year, further straining California's water security. Yeah, so pretty soon you're going to have to uh, open up a canal for, for um yeah, for water to be channeled from, I guess, the, the Great Lakes, huh? So, what is now California was first settled by various native Californian tribes before being explored by a number of Europeans during the 16th and 17th centuries. The Spanish Empire then claimed and colonized it. In 1804, it was included in Alta California province within the Visceral, oh no, Visceral, Vice Royalty of New Spain. The area became a part of Mexico in 1821 following its successful war for independence, but was ceded to the United States in 1848 after the Mexican American War. That's one of the greatest scars in the pride of every Mexican in their history, probably. Um, yeah. Ugh. Yeah, we, we just, I guess, manifest destiny. We here in this country, we just want it all. Yeah, I'm surprised that we didn't take Canada along with all that. But, um, yeah, I feel really bad for the, the people that were there before they grabbed it. Um, so, 1848. The western portion of Alta California was then organized and admitted as the 31st state on September 9th. 1850. Oh, so there was the Baja California, I guess that means the Lower California, and then there's Alta California, which is what California looks like today in the United States. Okay. The California Gold Rush started in 19, 1848, led to dramatic social and demographic changes with large-scale immigration from the East, that's still true today, and abroad with an accompanying economic boom. That is also true today. Wow. What we've seen in the 1850s is still happening today in 2020. Silicon Valley, LA, Hollywood, you know, the cultural center, the tech boom in Silicon Valley, the valuations, the uh, glamours of the big screen cinema yeah all that is still here so you know as much as we all say that california is a thing of the past uh, i mean a lot of people say that i don't think that's the case although there are <laughs> a massive ex uh, exodus um of rich people out out of california not rich people probably actually i take that back it's an exodus of middle class 
or lower middle class or poor people out out of California because the cost of living has just been yeah risen above the level of reason of of any reason uh, um yeah it's uh yeah it's very it's very hard to comprehend how the state can let the housing price um get to that level where yeah where it's unsustainable and people all pack up and leave um they can't be good for their economy either so yeah it's uh it's kind of sad for for the people that have left but for the people that have stayed or have made it in california good for them they must be like raking in millions every year and um living the life while the most of californians are just um uh, i don't know like scraping by with um, minimum wage or just slightly above minimum wage and yeah this is a great sense of inequality that has uh, a lot of profound effects to our future uh, in this country not just in california but it's just a snapshot of what's happening around the world but you get to see it very clearly in california um yeah so with all that um i just like to finish off with uh yeah i guess the last two idioms beacon in the night to me california has always been a beacon in the night um no matter how bad the nation's economy has been or will be um california has always sort of been uh not a haven but a special spot both in people's uh perception as well as in i guess the housing price um i don't think california is as affected as much as the rest of the country in the 2008 recession um yeah in any case it's it carries a sense of hope for a lot of um yeah for a lot of people looking for that hope so yeah please california don't go down okay don't go down with the rest of the country when we get into a turmoil of segregation and uh, a great divide um for the last four and uh, for the also for the foreseeable four eight twelve years um we need you we need you to be there to be our beacon in the night and the very last idiom is it's almost true to the extent okay yeah uh i guess if you think california is going down it's almost true to the extent that it's not because there's so much more to california than just the people that have left there are still a lot of um uh young and energetic people trying to feed into the insatiable taxation of that state um although that state government's going broke um, or has been broke but the state is going nowhere okay i i have a strong belief in california and the creativity and the productivity of its people and uh, you know I, as much as everybody's saying that all californians are moving to florida or texas or or, or boulder colorado to get weed um it's gonna be yeah it's gonna be the exception rather than the rule because california has a future and like i said it's always gonna be our beacon in the night and it's never true that california is a thing of the past all right so after saying all those good things about california i think i'm gonna sign off now and you guys have a wonderful christmas today is the 24th of december and um we're almost done with this horrendous year uh, of 2020 and um yeah christmas is a time of joy so um enjoy the the great holiday spirit and merry christmas i'm signing off peace